All I got to say is I can't go out to lunch in Florida in my free time, not doing anything, just eating outside. And it's wall to wall Fox News coverage. And then you have a member of Congress engaging in sexually lewd acts in a public theater and they got nothing to say. I danced to Phoenix once in college and it was like all over the place. But um, putting on a whole show of their own at Beetlejuice and it's and there's nothing. I'm just saying be consistent. That's all I'm asking for, equal treatment. I don't expect it, but come on. It has been years that Republicans have been grandstanding about protecting children. You can't watch conservatives for four minutes without hearing someone complain about the groomers on the left. Joe Biden can wave hello to a child in the crowd and you'd have half of these right wing grifters claiming that he's a pervert. And yet, when a Republican congresswoman engages in a openly lewd sexual act in a crowded theater during a family friendly musical, it is silence from these defenders of young people, just crickets from these guardians of our youth. I guess kids don't need protecting when the offenders have a little R next to their name. In fact, Lauren Boebert herself had taken to Twitter in November of 2021 and tweeted, seems Joe Biden understands basic economics as well as he understands appropriate behavior around kids. Tell me again, what part of this is appropriate behavior in a theater filled with, you guessed it, kids? And when given the opportunity to apologize, this is what she said. Ultimately, all future date nights have been canceled, and um, I learned to check party affiliations uh, before mm. you go on a date. Uh, but all in all, um, you know, it was, uh, it was mostly a lovely time. That she learned she should check party affiliations before she dates, because of course, the fact that she was caught performing lewd sexual acts in a theater is the fault of, you guessed it, the Democrats. Because party of personal responsibility or something. I spoke with the Democrat running for her seat in Colorado's 3rd Congressional District, Adam Frisch, in an upcoming interview about this whole debacle, and here's what he had to say. Yeah, I wish we weren't having these conversations, uh, Brian, rea in reality. I mean, there's two things we focused on from day one, last cycle, when we had the closest race in the country, and that was people want the circus to stop, and they want this angertainment industry uh, that my buddy Dean Phillips talks about, and I talk about a lot as well. And they want someone in the House of Representatives to focus on the district and not themselves. And so this latest Beetlejuice uh, escapade is just another notch in the belt of embarrassment, as I say, for the district. I wish we were having conversations about accessing rural health care better for our constituents and our families and trying to figure out how to uh, get inflation and some of these costs under control and child care. Uh, and making sure that we have the water we need for our ranchers and our and our farmers and our recreation people. And unfortunately, the whole country, literally the whole country, is just focused on the current representative's um, latest shenanigans. And I'd rather just spend my time focusing on the district. But we are working with what's dealt with us in the life of politics in 2023. There's a reason, and understandably so, so many more people are more cynical of politicians, elected officials in D.C., uh, how they act, what they say, do what I say, not what I do. That type of conversation happens a lot. And again, we're trying to just focus on the issues that matter to the communities and the families and the business owners of our district. However, it goes back to just said, there's a lot of people pointing out this hypocrisy that you mentioned. That full interview will come out this weekend, so if you're not yet subscribed to this channel and want to watch it, then please make sure to subscribe. I should note too that Adam Frisch came within 546 votes of Lauren Boebert in 2022, the closest race of the entire election cycle, and given the fact that Boebert has only continued to present herself as an extremist, has only continued to embarrass herself and her party and her district, it certainly is well within the realm of possibility that he'll be able to defeat her in November of 2024. But going back to this common Republican refrain of protecting kids, clearly they are not in the 
least bit concerned about that. And it's not just because they're perfectly content to behave inappropriately in front of them. I mean, come on, it doesn't exactly take a detective to see the GOP's record on protecting children. They vote against childcare. They vote against early education. They vote against universal pre-K. They vote against the child tax credit. They vote against student loan debt relief. They vote against SNAP, where half the recipients are children. They vote against Medicaid, where again, half the recipients are children. When Republicans stripped women of their reproductive rights across the country, we saw a rise in young girls giving birth after being assaulted. Of the 10 states with the highest child poverty rate, eight voted for Trump, and of the 10 states with the lowest child poverty rate, six voted for Biden. Any way you cut it, Republicans are showing through their actions that they have zero interest in protecting children. They just like being able to leverage it as a talking point to make themselves feel good on Fox. And that's the point of all of this. Republicans aren't interested in anything other than branding. They want to sell themselves as being defenders of children because A, it sounds good, and B, it offers a nice little distraction, some plausible deniability when they try to enact their actual agenda, which by the way, doesn't do shit for kids. Making healthcare less affordable and lowering the tax rate for billionaires and cutting earned benefits and refusing to raise the minimum wage and blocking student loan debt relief, is any part of that agenda popular? Does any of it help kids or even their parents? Of course of course not. But it's not about reality, it's about branding. Something they have to lean on extra heavily because when the product sucks, then the packaging better be really, really nice. Let's not pretend that Republicans don't know that. And to that point, we've recently seen a raft of their so-called values get exposed. They claimed to be the party of family values, then they turned around and supported Donald Trump, the guy who paid off porn stars and escorts for affairs, including while his wife was at home pregnant with their son. They claimed to be the party of states' rights, and yet during the 2020 election, while trying to illegally subvert the election results, they all signed on to the Texas lawsuit to discard the election results in Georgia, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Michigan. Or how they applauded the overturning of Roe because it should be up to the states, and yet what happened immediately after? Republicans started calling for, you guessed it, a nationwide ban on abortion. So I guess it's only a state's issue until they can make it a national one. They claim to be the party of fiscal responsibility, and yet what happened the last time Republicans took power? They added $7.8 trillion to the debt, and for what? A tax cut that overwhelmingly favored millionaires and billionaires. They claim to be the party of jobs. Now, not only did Trump lose the most jobs of any president in modern American history, but in my entire lifetime, there's not been a single Republican president that's created more jobs than a Democratic president. Republicans still parade themselves around as if they've somehow got this monopoly on job creation, where not only do they not have monopoly, they don't have any winning stats to point to against Democrats. And finally, Republicans claim to be the party of the police. And yet, well, I'm not sure I have to remind anyone what happened on January 6th. Pretty sure it was only one party supporters who managed to bludgeon police officers, and if memory serves me correctly, they weren't the Democrats. So I know there are probably a broad range of ways to support the cops. Pretty sure trying to murder them isn't one of them. So look, I don't give a shit what Lauren Boebert does in her free time, but it is a massively effective tool in showing the abject hypocrisy that pervades the Republican Party. They might claim to be something that sounds nice on their bumper stickers or in their campaign ads, but their actual actions tell a vastly different story. But then I guess we shouldn't be surprised, since at the core of their identity is lying. Before you go, I need some help. Please subscribe to the channel and do your part to help grow the progressive media ecosystem. I don't do sponsorships or paid ads, I won't ask for money, but just subscribing to this channel goes a really long way and it helps get the message out to more people. The subscribe button is right here on the screen. You can also subscribe to my Spanish language channel, which I made to reach those crucial Spanish speaking voters. That link is on the screen too. And finally, if you want to listen to my audio podcast, you can follow that link as well. Thanks so much for watching.